here. Next fight is the Saturday night bout in New York City at the Hulu Theater adjacent to Madison Square Garden. Edgar Berlanga will be involved here in a 10-round main event. Berlanga, an unbeaten super middleweight, fighting Romar Alexis Angulo. He goes by Romar or Alexis Angulo. Berlanga is favored Although it is a narrow, he's not on the money line. He's only like a a minus two hundred favorite. By knockout, Berlanga is plus two hundred. The over under here, we did not have one at uh, at check here when we um, when we came aboard from Bet US. So there's not an over under. My speculation would be the over under might end up being like five and a half or six and a half rounds. We don't have that. Officially. All right, Dan, what are your thoughts? Berlanga unbeaten. Berlanga began his career. This was noteworthy. This is a fighter again, born in Puerto Rico, now fights out of New York with 16 consecutive first round knockouts. So that's eye catching. Oh, yeah. Now, now, the next part is he stepped up in competition. The last three fights have gone the distance. Okay, Dan, your thoughts on Berlanga and this matchup with a veteran in Angulo. What do you think? All right. Well, as you mentioned, 16 first round knockouts. Uh, not only is it eye-catching, but it created a huge amount of hype uh, with boxing fans, with his broadcaster ESPN, his promoter was excited, his whole team, Berlanga, you know, this is the second coming. They were talking about, like, him fighting Canelo Alvarez, and it's going to be a huge fight. And everybody, let's slow down, take a deep breath. Settle down. <sighs> Settle down. Yes. yes. He's a good prospect. 16 first-round knockouts, he didn't learn anything because he never had to even go back to right. the school to get an instruction or hear something from his trainer. So... That was not obviously going to last forever. He then went eight rounds distance with a fighter named Damon Nicholson, who he totally dominated, dropped multiple times, beat up. But Damon Nicholson was a tough dude and went the distance. That was still a good performance, even though he didn't get the KO. And in many ways, I felt like and his team felt like the best thing that could ever happen to Berlanga <clears throat> was to go the distance and not get the first round knockout because you're able to learn your craft. Know you can go eight rounds and hang in there with a guy that's throwing something back at you. Um then came the problems. He fought uh, Coceres on an undercard uh, in Las Vegas on one of the on the third Tyson Fury Deontay Wilder undercard. He suffered a uh, an injury to his biceps. He got knocked down. Uh, he ended up winning a decision. So and he had surgery on that biceps after that. So that is a kind of a double edged sword. Didn't look very good, but you got to give the man credit for a going through the adversity of the injury, getting up off the deck, and still having enough to actually win the fight without controversy. So that was like good and bad in that fight. Now you go fast forward to his most recent fight where he was fighting at the Hulu Theater uh, in Madison Square Garden in New York. A big crowd there for him about, you know, sold out 5,100, all there for Edgar, uh, Edgar Berlanga uh, against Steve Rolls, a fighter that if you know him, you probably know him because he gave a decent account of himself against Triple G, Gennady Golovkin, although he got stopped in that fight. And uh, Berlanga... Uh, not only did he go the 10 round distance in that main event, he won the fight, but he just did not look at it all. It was a really, unfor you know, a very uneven, very disappointing performance. I think he was disappointed himself. I know that his people were disappointed. Top rank was disappointed. Just didn't look good. Now he's got the chance to come back. Is he going to go four in a row going the distance or is he going to be able to stop Angulo? And it's, again, a big deal because not only is it back in that same arena where his fans are. Uh, in New York at the Hulu Theater at Madison Square Garden, ESPN main event. It is the eve of the annual Puerto Rican Day Parade weekend in New York, which top ranked many years ago when they were the promoter for Miguel Cotto, who will be inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame on Sunday, really created some of his biggest events. They made a decision to, like similar to why Mexican fighters uh, became a big deal to fight on the weekend of Cinco de Mayo or on the Mexican Independence Day weekend in September, top ranks thought was let's have one of our big Puerto Rican stars fight on the eve of the Puerto Rican Day Parade weekend in New York where the parade takes Makes place. Makes total sense. Makes and sense. Cotto, Cotto had some of his biggest fights on that weekend, uh, including against people like Zab Judah, which was a huge fight, the anniversary of which is uh, this week. And so they are playing that same playbook with uh, Edgar Berlanga, not in the big room at Madison Square Garden, but in their smaller arena. So it's a lot of pressure on, on, on Berlanga. He's so excited to, to fight on this weekend. He says he's dreamed about it since he's a kid. He idolized Miguel Cotto and Felix Tito Trinidad, another uh, all-time great Puerto Rican fighter. So, you know, it's a lot of pressure on him. Not only does he want to get the knockout, not only is he fighting on Puerto Rican uh, parade weekend eve, not only is he fighting in front of his hometown, 
uh, and Miguel Cotto is supposed to be ringside before he goes back to Canastota for his induction on Sunday. So there's a lot of stuff going on for this young man. And he's got a tough dude in front of him. Angulo is no joke, man. This is, in my opinion, without question, his best opponent of his career. I know Coceres had fought for a world title, uh, but but uh, uh, Angulo has fought for a world title twice and given solid accounts of himself. He went 12 rounds fighting for a super middleweight title against Gilberto Zerto Ramirez. He lost you know, a, a lopsided decision, but he hung in there for the whole 12 rounds. And the only other loss in his career was a, was a stoppage, um, a late stoppage against David Benavides. They were fighting for a vacant super middleweight title where, where it was really unfair for Angulo because David Benavides got stripped of that title because he had come in overweight. So he had not struggled to make the weight, which gave him, uh, most people think, a little bit of an edge. And, uh, and um, he lost that fight. But if your only two losses are to two of the best fighters in the division, uh, Benavides and now and, and Zerto Ramirez, who's now not at the super middleweight division anymore, but one of the best light heavyweight contenders in the sport. Those are those are solid type of losses if there is such a thing. And Berlanga hasn't faced anybody like that. And he's stepping up. And I think this is a tough fight for the kid. All right. So we're going to lock in a prediction. I could sense this when you were already saying this. You think this is going a while. We don't have an over under. In fact, you think this is going the route. It will be a Berlanga win, says Dan Rayfield. And he is going to cash, he believes, on the decision, plus 125. Good value on that. I disagree with you. Here we go again with a little bit of difference. I think Berlanga gets back on track. I saw that Benavides-Angulo fight uh, previously. And you make a good point that Benavides came in maybe a little heavier than what he should have been because he was allowed to be overweight. They stripped him of his title and still have the fight. I just think with something to prove, with all the buildup that you laid out, Berlanga's going to deliver. Late night, Saturday night, Hulu Theater, right next to Madison Square Garden, New York City. I think this is an Edgar Berlanga knockout. And again, we make this distinction on the Bet US Boxing Show. We're not looking at a specific round. I just think at some point in the 10-round main event, Berlanga gets to him by stoppage or by KO. And I'm getting a little more value than just taking Berlanga on the money line. I'm going knockout plus 210 here for bet us purposes just not, one more time not here for Berlanga. I, not unreasonable yeah. to do that right. just, uh, you know i just feel like angulo is tough enough to hang for 10 and rounds. maybe he is so if berlanga is victorious which we both believe that he is how realistic is it that he could get a title shot at some point we know that canelo alvarez has all the belts at 168 right now he's fighting golovkin in september he's more than likely fighting Dmitry uh, Bivol, the Russian, in a rematch next year. But can Berlanga get in the championship conversation in the next fight or two for him? Is it soon? It's a little bit too soon, I think, uh, partly partly because the, the titles are spoken for. Canelo Alvarez is not, not uh, giving those belts up anytime soon. The organizations are not about to strip the, the money man. Uh, there's no reason for them to do so anyway. Uh, so, you know, if you want to be a super middleweight champion, you got to go through Canelo Alvarez at this point until further notice. So that fight between Canelo and Berlanga, that's a long way away. I don't know if, you know, maybe it can happen down the road if he continues to develop and win. If it ever did come to pass and he had earned that shot and had be made it a big enough deal, uh, you're looking at a super fight because of the fact that he would have earned that position. Canelo is who he is. It's Mexico against Puerto Rico, which is the classic, uh, one of the classic boxing rivalries. Uh, we've seen so many uh, phenomenal matchups between fighters from those two places. Um, and, and there's been a real history there now after the last, you know, 40 years or whatever it's been since they've been having regular battles between their best fighters. Uh, but I think it's a lot premature uh, to be talking about Edgar Berlanga fighting for a super middleweight title, be it against Canelo Alvarez or anybody else. Uh, he is in that gray area right now. He, he's had a lot of people very excited for good reason. And he's got a great personality. He's a nice kid. I mean, I've met him, interviewed him several times. I know his team. I know his management. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they, they, they're working hard. Um, but it's can he continue to develop? If he can, it's going to be a great thing for boxing because you have another guy that it would be a, a quality fighter, but also a bankable guy at the box office and on tel television. He's uh, you know he's got star potential. He's got that charisma. You just got to be able to put the ability with that ability to sell tickets and to create excitement and all that. So this is a very pivotal fight for him. Now I don't think that there's any problem going the distance in this fight. You know, I'm not one of those guys that's, oh, he's got three knockout or three distance fights in a row, and now maybe it's going to be four distance fights in a row. I don't really care so much about that. To me, it's about what's the performance like. Are you are you 
doing what you're supposed to do. Now, you can't account for if the guy you're fighting just has a great chin or, you know, sometimes just the guy's just not going anywhere that night. You're going to have to figure out a way to get through those 10 rounds. So, but if he goes the 10 rounds and he looks sharper and more diverse right. with his attack and, and, and defensively he's more responsible and he listens to what his corner says, you know, you can make an assessment after, those, after that fight. It, did he look better than he did against Steve Rolls? Because, again, the ultimate – is to win the fight. He did that against Steve Rolls. No one's questioning that, but it was really a lackluster performance. And he knows that he's, he'll be the first to admit it. Talk to his team, you know, what privately they'll tell you that his trainers, his management, they know, they know it was not a great showing, uh, but they know they got a kid with the potential to be a star. He sold that building out. Uh, and and um, the, the fight on, uh, on this weekend, there's going to be another big crowd there. Uh, the question is, you know, what's the state of mind of uh, Romer Alexis Angulo? Is he coming to lay down? Or is he going to come to give a, a big time fight and hang in there against a tough opponent? But like I said, not like Angulo and I are buddies and we haven't had an interview or talk, but I think he's coming to hang in there for a while. All right. All right. You, and I, you and I slightly disagree. This will be late night, Saturday night. ESPN will televise uh, Edgar Berlanga, Romar Alexis Angulo. Thank <laughs> you.